welcome to The Leadership Edge. I'm your host, Ted Gorski. The Leadership Edge is a show that focuses on those, those pertinent leadership issues that affect leaders on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm your host, Ted Gorski. I'm a leadership and executive coach from Get Your Edge. And what we do is really help you kind of be better as a leader on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, today's show, I was talking to producer Bill, and I said, what should we cover today? And he says, Ted, I like the topic of your show today, pot luck. And I was like, producer Bill, it's not that kind of pot, remember? So to this week, what we're going to do is I'm going to share with you common questions that I receive in my coaching and whenever I'm doing workshops. And so today's is going to be rapid movement. We're going to be talking about various topics today, not really going in deep, but kind of sharing with you my perspective on some of these questions. Because if they're affecting the people and the leaders I'm coaching today, they're probably affecting you as well. So that's what come we call today potluck, because after all, when you have a potluck dinner, you're always getting a smorgasbord of various things. Ooh, smorgasbord. Great word for today's show. So, let's jump right into it and start calling with dealing with the various questions. So, question number one uh, that I hear most of the time is, what is the most common mistake that leaders make? Well, I will tell you that there's quite a bit that kind of fit into this category. But the one I think that really leaders really fall short on, on most common, is really not giving effective feedback. What I notice with a lot of leaders that I coach is that there are a lot of opportunities that pop up in which they're not taking advantage of in providing feedback. Now, I've talked to many people in organizations, some who have just had their performance reviews, and they would tell me, Ted, this is the first feedback I've gotten in one year. You're kidding me! One year! Can you imagine that? Can you imagine working for a boss who the only time you get feedback is in your yearly performance review? Unacceptable. So your challenge as leaders is to really make sure you provide timely and effective feedback. So what you need to do is make sure that whenever someone does something right, you want to give that kind of feedback. You want to give them feedback that tells them that you saw what they did. I call this the good foot patrol, in which I tell my leaders to go out and look for things that are happening that is good, not bad. So challenge to you, and the most common mistakes that leaders usually make, is not providing timely and effective feedback. Second one that I hear a lot. My direct reports are asking me the same questions over and over again when working, working on a project. How can I correct this? You know, this is probably another one that usually happens quite a bit whenever I'm dealing with coaching situations. And what this tells us is, whenever you have direct reports who are coming back to you with the same questions that you've probably dealt with earlier, whether you were assigning the project or kind of working through the details, what that tells us is that there's a different learning style in play. Meaning, what you're providing to your direct report in terms of instructions is not matching up on how they learn. There are three types of learners. We have audio learners who listen by, who learn by listening or by lecture. Second, there's visual learners who kind of see it on a whiteboard or kind of have to see visually how things work. And thirdly, we got the kinesthetic people who have to do. So you have to, your job as a leader is to really match up what you're trying to do when you're connecting and providing instructions. If they're coming back with a similar question, what I want you to ask yourself is, how did I present the instructions? Maybe it's a way that you have to adjust your approach and, and understand that their learning style may be different than yours. And that's most likely the case. Question three. I get, ang I get angry quickly when things don't go right. How can I correct this? You know, this is um, probably one of the most, most important questions that leaders have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. When things don't go right. You know, the, usually what happens is people get into an angry state, and when that happens, all bets are off. You've probably seen this in the office. The person that goes absolutely crazy when things don't go right. But as leaders, we have to stay in balance. Meaning, 
that the whole concept here is when you're in balance, you as leaders can really provide and, and give more effective and be better in your decision making. It's when you spike up in your emotions and you start making, making uh, decisions on an emotional level, things don't go well. But here's the kicker. Anger does serve us. And the whole concept is, is really processing it the right way. I was just coaching a, a, a person recently who actually went through this process and really taught themselves how to adjust their anger so they're more in balance in those situations. What I'm asking you to do is when you will recognize that you're angry, there are two things, or two, two things why you might be angry. Number one, anger tells us a boundary has been crossed. So you have to ask yourself, what boundary has been crossed in this situation? Second, it could be what's, there's an injustice happening that you want to make just. If you can ask yourself those questions, that will give you an idea of what the pertinent issue is when you're dealing with anger. And by understanding what anger is trying to tell you, you as a leader can deal with effectively what actions you have to make. With this particular leader I coached, he said to me, what ended up happening in that situation was because I recognized my anger and I asked those questions, it guided me in a direction in this meeting which created a win-win compromise in his mind. He was able to get what he wanted from that situation, but he was able to stay in balance. So the key thing that, that you want to deal with whenever you're angry is to really ask yourself that questions, ask those two questions, and realize which one of these might be into play and what action you need to take to correct things. Question four. My direct reports that say that I come across as negative. How can I correct this? You know, this, this happens quite a bit. We see that a lot of leaders tend to, at times, always look at what is not happening versus what can happen. And what happens in meetings is that they come across and people feel that this person becomes a negative nilly. So leaders really need to understand and balance and look at and create what I call a can-do attitude. Now, with leaders who I coach that have this kind of situation, what I encourage them is what I, it's an exercise that I call the two-for-one challenge. <laughs> yeah, two-for-two. Two-for-one challenge. Basically what it is, is before you say anything on a negative perspective, you have to say two positives. So it forces the leader to really look at what is positive in that situation. Let me tell you, when I have my leaders go through this exercise, in the beginning it really stresses them because at times they grasp to try to find the positives. But as they get better and better in doing this exercise, what ends up happening is people see them a whole different light. Now they're coming across and showing that they have a positive can-do kind of approach. So I challenge you that if you have a negative attitude or people have told you this, try this two-for-one challenge. I will tell you it has really changed perspectives of leaders that I've worked with for the better. Question five that I get quite a bit is, is empathy important? Now, what a lot of leaders I deal with, you know, they're all about results oriented. It's about getting things done in a timely manner. In fact, they even look at themselves in a sense of urgency. But what ends up happening is they lose that personal touch with people. Because after all, we are humans. Well, I can speak for myself, but I'm not sure about producer Bill. But the whole concept is, is that people need to understand and feel connected. Now, a lot of leaders ask me, well, Ted, if I show empathy, that shows I'm weak. That's far from the truth. What it is, it shows that you're human and that you want to connect and care about your people. And people really want to know that. They have to sense that you as a leader does do care for them and are empathic to what they're, experience, what they're experiencing. So it is important. Now, the key note that I tell my leaders who struggle with this, empathy does not mean you agree with what that person's experiencing. It's that you understand what they're experiencing. Those are two different kind of concepts. So the whole thing is for you to build that understanding and building that, uh, building that empathy and that caring nature will make you a stronger leader. And I will tell you that if you show your empathic nature, 
people are going to want to work for you. And that's the whole purpose of leadership. Next question I get a lot is, what is emotional intelligence? Well, emotional intelligence is your ability as a leader to manage your emotions. It's your ability as a leader to understand what you're experiencing. Now, for us as le for leaders, it's important to understand that because there are studies that show that a high emotional intelligence quotient, or EQ, actually is more important for leaders than a high IQ. So it meaning that a whole concept of understanding how you manage your emotions, understanding how those emotions affect other things is real important. It's uh, going back to what I said in an earlier question about staying in balance. It's all about understanding that when you make decisions, you want to avoid making them on an emotional level. And emotional intelligence helps you manage those more effectively so you can make better decisions and get better results. So it's really, really important to understand what that is. And there's assessments that can kind of measure that and really look at what's not working for you in your emotional intelligence. But it's an important aspect to kind of look at as a leader. Next question I get quite a bit is, are, be, are leaders born or made? Now, we've heard this all the time. We've heard the little quote that, you know, leaders are born and not made. Well, I kind of have a different spin on it. I see that leaders are born and reborn every day. I work with leaders who are struggling to, make, to get the results, and I help them build those skill sets to get reborn and re recreate their leadership. If you're not in a leadership role and you're going, well, I wasn't born to be a leader, that's BS. Because you as a leader, if you have the proper skill sets, can become, you can become a great leader. It's understanding and having those, kill, those key skill sets to be to effective. So don't buy into that crap that leaders are, are, made, are born. They are reborn every day. And if you're interested in becoming a leader, just as I was many, many years ago, when I started getting into leadership, it really showed me that your, your motivation, your passion, can bring you to high heights. So if you're interested, you can be reborn. Next question I get a lot is, how do I manage my manager? Now, this is quite interesting because we think of this concept as, what do you mean I manage my manager? But the whole concept here, as leaders, you're probably reporting to a, another leader that's higher up in the organization. And the whole concept is, you do want to manage up. It's understanding how your manager or how your leader that you report to, what's important to them? What is their kind of style? What do they want to take in? How do they consume information? How do you need to present things in a way that's going to help you get what you need to be successful as a leader in an organization? So managing up is really just simply looking at how does your manager consume information? What's important to your manager? What demands is your manager's manager putting on them that you can anticipate to give to your manager? So I challenge you to really look at that, because if you can get this grasp, this whole concept, if you can learn what they need and, and be able to anticipate their information needs, the value that you bring to that organization goes up exponentially, and so will your promotions. So always look at your manager and find out what they need, how they consume information, because the more that you can do that and anticipate their needs, the more effective is going to be for you. Question nine, how do I make my feedback more effective? We kind of talked about that in question one. But what, what makes it more effective is that it's timely. The whole idea is you want to catch someone doing something good and be able to provide that. Because the more that you can show that that's what you're looking for, the more you're going to get in produ reproducing that behavior. It's reinforcing that behavior that you're looking for. Avoid that gotcha management where you walk around and look for what people aren't doing. You know when you walk around going, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's what people are taught in schools and in, in, in leadership. That let's look at and correct what's going bad. We're never taught what, what do we need to look for to show that people are doing good. So I want you to look at the goodness and reinforce that. 
because the more you reinforce that, the more you're going to get the proper behavior. And that's a key to, man to management and leadership. Question 10, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> All right, we're taking a pause here, but I'm going to tell you what the meaning of life according to me is. It's about love and relationships. It's all about connecting with other human beings. So how does this tie into leadership? The meaning of life means you have to care about people. I tell people when they start getting into leadership or into management roles, you are now in the people business. You now need to understand what, why people do things in certain ways. What, what motivates people? What can, they, what can you do to help them achieve? Because there is nothing better than helping someone achieve at a higher level. There's nothing better feeling as a leader to really help others achieve what they want to achieve. So it's all about relationships and love. And that's what the meaning of life is all about. Loving what you do and having a zest for life. Experience life. Do things that are going to really push you and make you be a better human being. And I also would say give back to your community in some way, because that's what it's all about. Question 11, I'm a new leader. What's the most important thing that I should do? You know what, this is, this is probably one of the most common questions I get with some of my emerging leaders, that they're finally into a, into a leadership role, and now they're saying, okay, what do I do? The key part here is that you have to communicate to the people that, you're, that are on your team and check your ego at the door. I won't tell you how many times that I work with some new leaders and they're pounding their chest saying, now I'm the boss. Well, you know what? In that situation, you're going to lose respect and trust from the people that, that report to you. After all, they know who they're reporting to. You don't need to throw that in their face. The whole concept here is you want to really help others so you want to check that ego at the door, realize you now have more responsibility, and realize that your goal now is to help your direct reports be more effective in what they do. So the whole thing is you want to be openly, you want to open communicate with the people on your team. Don't be a cave, cave dweller. Don't stay in your office and, and stay there the whole day. Move out, see people, talk to people, communicate to people understand what's happening to them on a daily basis. It's going to help you be a better leader. Because you set those good habits, they're going to want to work for you, and they'll work hard for you. Question 12, is walking the talk and talking the walk important to leaders? Let me say this. This is probably one of the most important things that leaders must do. This is the whole thing about integrity. The whole concept here is that as a leader, you have to be, you have to show not only integrity of who you are and what you do, but you also have to be ethical in what you do. Because people on your team are watching you. And if you say to your team, well, I want you to stay late, well, guess what? As the leader, you need to model that. If you don't model it, you lose all credibility within your team. And I see that quite a bit. A person gets into a leadership role and all of a sudden they're going, okay, well, you know what? I don't have to work as hard because I got all these people working for me. It's the worst thing you can do. Your team has to see that you're not only committed, but you're probably committed more. You as the manager, as the leader, are really looked at to a higher standard. You need to model that behavior. So don't do this, do as I see, not as I do. Do as I say, not as I do. The whole concept that you want to do is make sure you're modeling the right behavior. If you're modeling ethics, be ethical. Don't cheat on your expense report. If you're really going to be focused on being an ethical and integrity leader, you need to live that every day. Because being an uh, being in integrity means that it's doing the right thing when people aren't looking. And it's important that you model that. Question 13, what's the best way to motivate others? Well, let me say this. A lot of my coaching and when I'm working with leaders, they'll share with me a situation that they may be dealing with with someone on their team. And they're trying to figure out a way to motivate that particular person. And the first thing they say to me is, I'll just give them more money. Wrong. I look at money as a temp temporary aphrodisiac. Look that word up, producer Bill, aphrodisiac. What it is basically, 
is that if you give money, it has temporary, it's a temporary situation. Once that person gets the money, after a while, guess what? That wears off. And then they start looking for more. The whole idea to really motivate people is to find out what is important to them. Are they in for challenges? Well, maybe you need to kind of give them a new challenge that they can see themselves grow. Are they into learning new things? You really, as a leader, need to find out what motivates each person. And guess what? One size does not fit all. You need to be able to understand and look at what's important to each individual. Because there isn't a one magic pill. But I will tell you this, it's not money. If you rely on that, what's going to end up happening is that people are going to lose that wear off feeling after a while and then are going to go back to the roadways. So avoid that trap of giving people more money and think that's the ultimate motivator because it's not. Question 14. Ted, boxers or briefs? <laughs> Let me tell you, it's boxer briefs. It's the best. It's the best invention they ever made. Because I don't believe in this whole thing about briefs, but boxer briefs are it, baby. That's what it is. That was Producer Bill's question. Thanks for slipping that in there, Producer Bill. Question 15, why do I delegate? I can get things done easier myself if I do them myself. I will tell you this. As a leader, your job is to develop the people that are on your team. It's your job to help them grow. It's your job to empower them, to give them the ability to grow in their particular job. And after all, that's what it's all about. Because we said earlier, it's the people business. But for you as a leader, it helps your time management. Because many hands make light work. Your job is to really help your team succeed and help the individuals grow. Delegation is probably the, one of the key tools that you can use to do so. Is it easier to do it yourself? Absolutely. But guess what? You keep on doing more tasks yourself, you're going to put in more and more time. And then you're going to kind of look at it and say, where is all my time gone? So for you, as a leader, it's important to delegate. And you have to let go. That's probably one of the biggest challenges that people see, especially new leaders, is they have that trouble of letting go. Question 16, how do I hire the right person? There's the magic $64,000 question. The key part as a leader is you have to really hire for attitude. My philosophy is you can always teach people the hard skills, meaning whatever that particular job is doing. Now, don't get me wrong. If it's a programming job, they have to understand how to program. But my philosophy always is find the right attitude because the right attitude is going to blend into your team more effectively, and you're going to see that they're going to grow more effectively. I always felt hiring for attitude was the best because there you can fill in the missing pieces and what needs to get done. And I've been very successful in doing that. So really look at the attitude. Do they have a can-do attitude or a can't-do attitude? Do they look at things positively or negatively? Because I tell you, I, would want, I want a can-do attitude who sees things positively. So I would look for attitude to make sure that's what's important for you to move forward. 17, is celebrating success important? Let me tell you something. This is probably one of the things I see most leaders don't do. After a, a project that their team is working on, it, let's say for months, and everyone's putting in all their effort to get the project done, what usually then happens? Congratulations, you got another one. Well, what happens to the team? The team, after going through all of that first project, their reward is, here's the next one. How do they celebrate the success? Your job as a leader is to be able to do that. Celebrate that, uh, that, that new success of completing that first project before you jump into the second one. Now, how do you do that? Very simple. What I used to do was have pizza parties. This is a stake in the ground that <clears throat> shows the team that they succeeded in achieving something, and we all should celebrate what we have achieved together. This really shows, by putting a stake in the ground, that we have achieved this. Now, how many leaders do this? Very little, and it amazes me. Your job as a leader is to really make sure you celebrate those successes with people. Celebrate it with your team. 
make sure that you put that stake in the ground so they can see that you're moving on to the next project, but you're celebrating what you did achieve as a team. Doesn't take a lot of money, doesn't take a lot of time, but it goes a long way. Last question for our show today for Potluck. What makes a good team? Million dollar question. Very simply, a high performing team understands and communicates. A high performing team understands expectations. High performing team knows their role. A high performing team deals with conflict effectively. So the ability to have the team to galvanize is an important piece here. Now, you don't need everyone to see things the same way. Many of the teams that I work with have different styles that play, but they both complement each other. The goal of a good team is that they, they naturally care for each other and will help each other. So the, the backbone here is communication in dealing with conflict. So a good team and a great team understands how to do that and do that well. So there you have it, the top 18 questions that I usually get in our potluck today. Not too bad in terms of how fast we've kind of covered these. So I've left you with some challenges and some of these questions. I hope you learned a little bit. So kind of in closing today, if there's anything we can do for your leadership or team development needs, by all means, give us a call at tedagetyouredge.com. We'll be more than happy to help you develop your leadership teams, as well as develop your leadership talent. So again, thanks for tuning in for today's show. We'll see you next time on The Leadership Edge.